Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Asus Republic of Gamers Ryu, Ryo, I don't know how to pronounce it. Let's just say Ryu 3 and I have the 240 version and the 360 version. So 220 millimeter fans and 320 millimeter fans and I have been lucky enough to get the white ones. I have struggled to find white ones in retail yet but I'm going to assume that they are fairly coming fairly abruptly because I have had these for a couple of weeks now. Now uh, Asus did say to me to make a big point about the fact that they had a small window with uh, the new Asetek 8th gen pumps uh, and that's a small window of exclusivity with the Asetek 8th gen pumps. Um, so it's a whole new iteration. Now uh, as I've said I have the uh, white ones and they do look very nice. There is a lovely uh, ROG kind of embossed in the side of the radiator which is lovely. Nice details with the um, Velcro tie around the hoses. The hose is lovely soft braid that is white. It's all very nice. I really like the look of the pump as well with the the, the square kind of touchy feely stuff on the side rather than it just being plain. Uh, but one of the problems I have noticed with the pump is the writing is fixed. You cannot rotate the top at all. So if you want to mount it a slightly different way around, the writing is going to be off. This is further exacerbated with the software because the, there is a um, like a dot matrix on the pump. And uh, the, the images that come up are set to with the hoses to be at the bottom. And in the software, there is no easy way to just rotate it. I've gone in there and I've had a look. There does look like there's a button for it, but in reality, that is a, uh, an undo redo button. There is a button further over to the left that is a, so you can move it. But I don't think you can move it when the image is animated because it never became uh, visible. Like un It's greyed out, basically, and I couldn't do it. So you kind of have to mount it this way round uh, with the hoses at the bottom near the graphics card. Now, I'm of the old school way, which I'm, because I am old, is that I normally have my um, hoses at the side out of the way. It also means that when the cables come out, there's a shorter run up to the top of the board as well. I've mounted them in the two different ways, like the way I want to do it and the way that you have to do it. So this is the way that I want to do it with the 360, but then this is the way that you have to do it with the 240 fitted. Now, the dot matrix screen does sound very limiting, um, but thankfully the animations that you get within the pack on Asus, they, they are animated with their own colors, but you can then link it to um, AuraSync, and then with AuraSync you can make those same animations a static color, uh, or you can, if you've got the fans going on rainbow mode or you know, you're lighting on rainbow mode, the dot matrix will do rainbow mode as well. So it is still uh, full RGB, but it's just not a big screen there. So technically, it's slightly better than the just frosted look that you would have had with the EK. Um, you can put like GIFs and stuff on there as well. So it's not a full LCD screen, but you have some dot matrix style sort of like 8-bit um, uh, imagery that you can put on there and uh, experiment and play around with. I could probably do the OC3D logo if I wanted, but I, you have to then use the dot matrix editor and it, it took a while and if I'm really honest with you, I just didn't want to sit there and play with it. So, few limitations with pump and then cabling because of it. Uh, we then got into the nitty gritty of testing. Thankfully, the fans do go down to 600 RPM, so it meant that we could test very low. The fans go up to 2050 RPM as well. Now, what we've done is we've just done it with the overclock on, yes, it's a 9900K, but it does mean that we've got a fairly meaty graph. So I know people were going to be saying they did last time, why are you not using a 13900K? Uh, it's because we actually like to compare stuff and the 9900 was a very hot uh, bit of kit, still is, and at the end of the day it's just as much about the comparison. 
is it is a specific processor. If I use a 13900, then I get people moaning at me that I've not used the 7950X. So I can't win, so we just stick with the old one. But we do have a new test rig coming that you will see coming soon. Anyway, we did get the testing done. We did a 600 RPM low test, which with all due respect, for 100% load at 600 RPM, that is not something you are going to be doing at home. It is just to pick apart a good cooler from a great cooler. Uh, we then do uh, 1000 RPM, 1500 RPM, and then just whatever the fan's max speed would be, and these are 2050. Now, I do need to mention something. We did run the pump at uh, maximum, which is 3000 RPM. Now, the pump, uh, I can have the case fans uh, at, on and then the uh, AIO on at 1500 RPM and I can easily hear the pump over the top of the fans. Uh, it's not quiet. Um, to the point where I would say the 8th gen pump is significantly louder than I was expecting. Um, and when I tested the 360 millimeter first, I did wonder whether there was something wrong with it. And I did all of the testing, then dropped the 240 in, and it was exactly the same. Um, so we have done a 50% fat uh, pump run, and it is a lot quieter. But uh, in a quiet room, let's just say you're going to leave your PC on overnight, and you've got your fans at like 600 RPM, I could still pick the pump tick up over everything else that was on. And that wasn't in a silent room either. Um, so it's definitely not going to win any awards for being a quiet pump. So pump wise, we don't know what the performance is like yet, but I will say that the EK pump is significantly quieter than this. Um, it kind of reminded me of Cooler Master pumps five, six, seven years ago. I was actually a bit disappointed in Acetec it on this regard if I'm honest. Now you will not notice it if you've got game noise on, speakers on and you're playing games. You will not notice it if you've got your headphones on but if you're a quiet user you're going to be sat beside it while you're typing. Uh, quiet maybe like you might share the same room with uh, your wife or your kids or your girlfriend or something. It will be at that point that they might start to tune into what's that whirring noise. It's not the worst thing since sliced bread. Uh, I have got uh, camera footage of it, but in reality, because of the rear fan, once I've turned the volume up so that you can hear it, you can also hear the rear fan going off, so I then have to stop that. Anyway, so it's, it is very noticeable, and it's noticeable enough for me to say about it in the video and say that I don't think it's particularly accept acceptable. It's definitely something that Acetec need to work on. Uh, the noise because if it's clicking it makes me think that the impeller is moving around too much so maybe it's not rigid enough or I don't know I'm not a pump engineer but I wasn't happy with it. Performance wise though it actually did very good better than I thought. Uh, now when I first started testing I actually did a range of ambient tests just to make sure I wasn't being unnecessary because it's quite cold in the UK at the moment and in the office because I have PCs on so much I actually took the radiator away that would normally be behind the desk. So uh, there's been times over the last couple of days that I've been playing around with these. I could easily have had the temperature in the house at 16 degrees and not have to worry about it. But I then did start putting the, uh, the heating on or the, because I've got uh, air con up here, which I can put heat out so I can control the room both up and down. So th I then did start to bring it up to sort of 1920 to double check that I wasn't being unfair with it and giving them a better advantage and thankfully the temperatures were within sort of a tenth or two tenths up until the point that I got sort of up near 30 degrees. I gave up at 26 degrees and it was the same. So just to be very clear and concise about it. As you can see the 360 did do well down at the bottom of the graph which is the better end of the graph because the temperatures are lower there and I'd actually say that the 240 was very admirable as well. The place where I was very surprised by it was the, the Asus did outperform the EK at 600 RPM. Now that has to be uh, just slightly better fans at a lower fan RPM. 
I would personally say for living with it that you're probably going to be better off with this running at somewhere between 1000 and 1250 RPM. The other side of it is I actually fixed the fan speeds specifically rather than putting a fan curve in because the Asus software doesn't actually take the CPU temp itself. It runs from a uh, probe in the back of the socket. So if you have it on a set profile that goes up, you'll actually see that the temperatures of the CPU will spike first and then the fans then catch up later because it needs the motherboard to um, warm up. Now, if I was to run it with that profile, they'd actually fail my tests because it would have got too hot. Only for a few seconds, but it would have got too hot. It's enough. It's either that or I ignore that spike and then take the temperatures afterwards. It's a complicated one, and I just wish Asus would use actual CPU temps rather than a socket temp or a guess at it, which they call the calibrated temp. And I'm just, I don't agree with it, and I haven't done for years, and it's something I've always been moaning about because I have to test these in a slightly different way or just say that they're crap. Uh, and it just means that um, I end up having arguments with them about it. So I've done this this way. You do just need to be very careful if you're using it with the fan profile, though. You are going to need to do it slightly differently to if you were using another brand. Because the problem with the socket temp as well is it always makes it look like your CPU temps are great. But, <coughs> excuse me but they're not as good as they look because like I said, it's not actually the CPU, it's technically the motherboard behind it. Um, uh, other things, so they, it did perform very well with those fixed temps, which is technically the way that I would have tested the EK, so that doesn't particularly, you know, they're fair in that regard, but if I was testing a Corsair, for example, we would have been doing balanced and extreme as well, which are technically the fan profiles will ramp up before I then move on to uh, like a full-blown, just fixed RPM. Oh, lots of explanations. So, mixed bag so far. Now, it was all good till this, and I was quite happy with the performance. I obviously liked them because they were white. Uh, I didn't like the pump and the orientation, and then we got to price. Bearing in mind that the 360 for the EK is uh, 199 euros, although I've just looked on the Overclockers website and I was a little bit surprised that they had them in stock, but also uh, the GBP price was actually quite aggressive. See the screen pop up now. Now, that eight, uh, Overclockers also had the Asus ones in black, not white, okay, but then the prices of those were considerably more. It's like a hundred pound difference. A hundred pound extra for an AIO. So you're looking at 250 for the 240 and 300 for the 360 mil AIO. That's an awful lot of money for an AIO. Now, I think, I know AIOs are getting more expensive. I'm, what this is now leading me to ask is, why EK can make them so cheap? Like, I don't know. Um, is there a lot of ROG tax going on with this? Have Asetek put their prices up? I don't know. They've both got RGB fans. They've both got a uh, color that you can put on the pump. A Little bit more control with the Asus, but I'm still not sure it's 100 pounds extra worth. And you do also need to remember that they're the black models, black to black. Sometimes there's a, a price increase for the whites as well. Now, EK don't have a white AIO yet. Read into that as you may. Anyway, I don't want to re uh, go over stuff. I'm going to leave that with you to decide on. A um, little bit expensive, yeah, probably. But they did perform very, very well. I didn't think they would be as close as they were to that EK, if I'm completely honest. It's just a shame that, the, that what the pump was a little bit noisy. Anyway, right, that is me done. I would love to hear your comments underneath. Don't forget you can go and have a look at the website uh, for the graph if you want to go in there and zoom in and all of that sort of stuff. Please like, subscribe, comment if you haven't done already. And uh, we normally follow up stuff like this uh, over on the Tiny Tom Logan Facebook page. If you haven't been there, maybe go and uh, take a look. And if you do follow that, say, oh, you said to come from YouTube, so I have. And you never know, we might spark up a conversation. 
deep breaths. Make of it what you will. This is the tiniest one with another video for you. Ding! Love you, sis.